Good to be with you once again, talking about prayer. I love to talk about prayer. I love to talk about communicating with God, because that's what it is. Prayer is communicating with God. And I've entitled this little talk this morning, The Necessity, The Necessity of Prayer. The Necessity of Prayer. Prayer is the necessity, it is the necessary link to receiving God's blessing and power and the fulfillment of his promise. Let me say that again. Didn't say it very well first time. Prayer is the necessity, the necessary link of receiving God's blessing and power and the fulfillment of his promises. Again and again, oh, we are, are told in the word to pray uh, in the plan of God. And the plan of God, the plan of salvation, uh, it, it, the, it, is, it is the ordained, I think, plan of God that the believer, uh, the, the co-worker, uh, becomes a co-worker with God in, in the plan of salvation. I hope I said that plain enough. That, that it's the plan of God that you and I should become involved in this, this undertaking that God has taken to try and redeem all of mankind. And we are part of that. Uh, in, in fact, uh, you know, the Word of God teaches us and shows us, it says this, that when God desires to send workers into the harvest field to bring the lost to Him, to help bring the people into the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus teaches us that uh, for God to uh, be able to uh, fulfill that, that great plan of salvation, uh, he can only do it uh, through the prayers of God's people. Uh, I can show you this in, in God's word. In, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, it says, Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth laborers into the harvest field. Pray, pray ye therefore. So we have to pray people into the kingdom. We have to pray that opportunities be given to people, that they will hear the gospel message. You know, there are still scores of people out there in the world that have never heard an adequate presentation. I add that because that's the way I like to think of it. I, I, sometimes, you know, people are aware of God, they're aware of Jesus, they're aware of the Holy Spirit. I mean, let's face it, you know, millions of people attend, you know, various churches, the Catholic Church, the, the Episcopal Church, and, and the Methodist Church, and, and, and they hear about God, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but they've never heard an adequate presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, whereby God says that the only way you can come to me is through Christ, not through good works, not through saints, not even through the Blessed Virgin Mary, but through Jesus Christ alone. And that is an adequate presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And God says in his word, Jesus says so in fact, he says, pray, Pray, you pray that the Lord of the harvest will send in laborers to bring this to pass, to bring people into a knowledge of salvation. Prayer is a necessity. Then, you know, then we ask the question, what is prayer? What is prayer? E.M. Bounds says this, and let me recommend to you E.M. Bounds. Anything that you can buy written by E.M. Bounds uh, on prayer, buy it, read it. It's phenomenal. Uh, this guy loved prayer and loved to teach people how to pray. And I have, I think, all of his books, and I've read them not once but several times on the, on the subject of prayer. E.M. Bounds. He said this, prayer is the, the contact of a living soul with God. Listen to this. In God, or rather in prayer, God stoops to kiss man, to bless mankind, 
and to aid in everything that God can devise or that man can possibly ever need. Wow. Prayer brings these things to pass. You know, there's nothing impossible with God. God can do whatever he wants. God can cause the sun to stand still in the heavens. The word of God declares that he's already done that. So God could do that. You look at it and say, well, that's impossible. Not with God. God can do anything he wants. But God sometimes is restricted in doing what he wants to do because we, we don't beseech him. We don't call upon him. We don't pray. We don't ask. But prayer will change that. It will cause God to do things that maybe he hadn't planned on doing. I like to think that, that through our praying and calling upon God for a certain issue, that it sort of, as it were, occurs to God to do it because we have prayed for it. And God, in his mercy and his great, extends himself and, and does for us what we have asked him to do. Prayer is a necessity. Charles Spurgeon, you've heard us quote Charles Spurgeon so many times. Pastor Mark and Luke, they love to quote Spurgeon. I've been quoting him a long time too. Charles Spurgeon says, prayer is the slender nerve that moves the muscle of omnipotence. It's the slender nerve that moves the muscle of omnipotence. God's hand is moved in response to our prayers. That's my version of what Charles Spurgeon said. God's hand is moved in response to our prayers. It's that slender nerve that the message flows through. You realize that, that our movements and our everything about us as human beings is governed uh, by nerves that receive messages from the brain to raise our hand, to point our finger, to get up and walk, to do what we do, is all controlled by, by nerves receiving messages from the brain to do those things. And uh, God's hand is moved. The, the slender nerve of prayer causes, as it were, the muscles of God's arm to come to life and move on our behalf and God does miraculous things and wonderful things and he answers our prayers. So God's hand is moved in response to our prayers. Prayer, what is it? Dick Eastman, let me recommend him too to you. Dick Eastman, great writer and uh, founder of a, a prayer movement that has been going on for uh, I don't know, years and years and years, Dick Eastman says, prayer is the simplest act a, a creature of God can perform. It is, a, it is divine com communion with our Heavenly Father. Prayer does not require advanced ed education or knowledge. It, it is not a prerequisite to engage in it. The only act of our will is required to pray. It only requires an act of our will to pray. If we don't want to, we don't. If we have no desire to do it, we don't. So this is why I'm trying to encourage you to develop a desire. Going back to what Wally Johnson said, having the want to having the want to, having the desire in your heart, that will come and become stronger in you as you develop it, as you discipline yourself. First of all, because maybe at first you're tired, you're, you're busy, you have a 101 things to do and you don't have the time for prayer. You make excuses, but through discipline, you can say, I will. I will put that aside so I can do this. I can pray. I'll get up earlier. My brother-in-law, Eddie Watkins, was a very busy man. He was, a, he was a pharmacist, but more than that, he was head pharmacist for the whole country of Wales. He only answered to one person before answering to the prime minister of the nation. One person, one boss, 
and then he answered to the Prime Minister. And so he had a very responsible job. He also pastored a small but very profitable little Assembly of God church in a, in a little village in Wales. And he oversaw that work. And then he did all this other work that he did as a, as a research pharmacist, a, a, a chemist, and do all this other work. And, and his signature was required on so many orders that went for uh, in the pharmaceutical field. He said to me, I find that I, I don't have time to pray as I really desire to. And so I've decided that I'm going to set my alarm an hour earlier. And the first thing I'll do after throwing some water on my face to wake myself up is go to a quiet place and pray for an hour and talk to God. The first thing he did every morning was to pray. He said to me, I have found that because I have sacrificed that hour and given it first and foremost to God, that I have time left over at the end of the day. I have time for leisure activities that I didn't have time for before. I find I have time to read a book that I wanted to read but didn't have the time to do it. I have time to go someplace that I wanted to go to but I didn't have time. And he said, it seems somehow that my time has been stretched because I've given God first and foremost this hour, the first hour of the day. Now, I'm not suggesting that you do that, but I am saying to you that I believe that if we discipline ourselves to pray, God in his graciousness will somehow increase our time and cause us to have extra time to do the things that we need to do because we put him first. So it starts with discipline, doesn't it? But eventually it comes to a place. And I remember Eddie telling me this. He said, I mean it seriously, I'm often awake before the alarm, and it's the, the alarm was going out at five o'clock in the morning because he normally got up at six o'clock every day, but he was getting up at five o'clock. And he said, I am awake before the alarm goes off because he said, I can't wait to go to that place where I, I sit and read the word and talk with God for an hour. He said, I, 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 my heart is filled with excitement to do it. And that came about because he learned how to discipline himself, first of all. So prayer is a necessity. And if we do it, we'll, the benefits are unbelievable. Prayer does not require advanced education or knowledge. It is not a prerequisite to engage in it. Only an act of the will is required to pray. For us to be considered to be saved, now this is a powerful statement. This is my statement, okay? Now, I, I like to make statements like this from time to time because I think maybe sometimes we, we need to hear things like this. It kind of wakes us up. I know, it, as I wrote it, it, it kind of spoke to me, it woke me up. Listen, for us to be considered to be saved, to be born again, to be children of God, we must pray. I can't call myself saved. I can't call myself born again. I can't say that I'm a child of God if I don't pray. If I'm not talking to God, he's not talking to me. He's not communicating with me. He's not sharing the secrets of his heart with me if I'm not willing to spend time with him. And so if I am to be considered to be saved, to be a, a born again believer, a Christian, a child of God, I must pray. There is no option. You have to pray. Prayer is essential, a necessity if you are to live for God. I finish with this. It's like breathing. Without it, you're dead. Without prayer, you're dead spiritually. You're going through a form of godliness. The Word of God says there are people in the Word of God, it speaks of, and it says that there are people that had a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. 
And there are people today, even in church, that have a form of godliness, but they don't know the power that there is in, in knowing uh, God in a personal way and feeling the power of the Holy Spirit working in their lives. They don't feel that when they come to God and they talk with Him, that He's really interested in what they've got to say. And it's because they don't practice prayer. Without prayer, you're not alive. You're dead spiritually. Ask yourself today, are you dead or alive? I want to be alive in Christ. I want to know what it's like to be able to come before a God that I know hears my, my faintest cry and He knows the longing of my heart. And uh, I want to be known as a friend of God. Father, I pray in Jesus' precious name that you will minister in the hearts and lives of people today and cause them, I pray, Father, to say, I want that kind of prayer life. I want, a, I want a prayer life that really counts. I want to be able to say, I'll talk to God about this and know that when you do, God is hearing you. God is listening and that God intends to do something about it and that God will show you by the Holy Spirit how to pray about a certain issue. The Word of God says sometimes that we, we don't know how to pray over a certain issue. We look at things sometimes, we look at problems, we look at situations that other people bring us and ask for advice and direction. We hear of people that are going through dilemmas in their lives, in their, in their, in their family structure, in their, in, their, in their domestic lives, there's, there's turmoil. And we hear about it and we say, wow, what an ugly mess. How do, you, how do you sort out a thing like this? And we, we ask God to direct us by the Holy Spirit as to how we should pray over those issues. And God, by the Holy Spirit, gives us the thoughts and the words that we pray. And we pray according to the Spirit. And these things then are answered because God is in it. Father, I pray in Jesus' name that we might, each and every one of us, desire and long for a prayer life like this. Prayer is a necessity. It has to be. For us to be alive in you, it must be. Bless those today, Father, I pray, that really seek after it with all of their hearts. And I pray in Jesus' name that you touch those that are sick in body today, those that are in pain. Minister to them, I pray. Help them to be strong, Lord. Help them, Lord, to look up. Even like the Apostle Paul who uh, came and, and asked you, on three occasions to remove the thorn that he had in the flesh. And your answer to him was, my grace is sufficient. I pray God that they might know your grace today, that it is sufficient. In Christ's name we ask it and for thy glory. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next Tuesday.